17 people on the call. So if uh, folks, if you can turn off your microphones, uh, that would be great. And um, we can get going. Uh, so good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Dave Hardy, and I work with Hardy Stevenson and Associates Limited. And I'm going to be facilitating the open house this evening. Um, if you're having, uh, I know there are some folks that are having some challenges with uh, with bandwidth and with Teams. So we do have a telephone number that I'll share with you right now. If you wish to phone in, it's one six four seven seven four nine. 9289 and there's an ID it's 7290616 number sign okay so let me continue then uh, i just want to thank everybody for taking the time this evening to participate in this open house i'm going to be leading us through a number of preliminary uh, matters uh, talk about the purpose uh, the, the way we're going to talk to each other, the protocol, uh, the introductions of who is on the call from in, the municipality of Clarington, who the consultants are, and so on. We'll have a health and safety moment. There are a couple of meeting courtesies, and there are a couple of questions I want to pose to you that you might want to consider. So I'm going to ask, uh, I think Garfield, including you, I'm going to ask everybody to, uh, to mute their microphone and uh, turn off your cameras. Uh, unless you've been called on or wish to ask a question or comment. And that makes sure he has as much bandwidth as, as possible. Um, so turning off cameras will make it easier for everybody. I expect we have budgeted the on the call until nine o'clock, but practically we'll continue to talk to each other until our comments and questions are addressed. The purpose of the open house is to provide an opportunity for you to learn about the decisions that the municipality needs to make and for the municipality to learn about your views. When we learn about each other and hear our, our different views, we make better decisions. We've convened the open house because the municipality of Clarington is undertaking a Schedule B municipal class environmental assessment to investigate how the local transportation network can best serve the community uh, as the Port Granby project enters its end use operations. The consultants will present the proposed options and they're looking for your comments. Once the presentation is finished, you and other members of the public and stakeholders are being asked questions and to, um, so there'll be questions for you to consider. And uh, we're looking for comments to assist the municipality to choose the preferred option. The meeting is being recorded and it is going to be posted to the Clarington environmental assessment project page. The recording and the notes of the meeting will be posted on the website, but we won't be attributing names. Um, and this will be posted once they're completed. Uh, we will put the website in the chat as well, but it's um, I was on the Clarington website uh, this afternoon. It's pretty easy to find uh, where this project is listed at the municipal of municipality of Clarington website. Alicia Friedel from SEMA Engineering will be taking notes and she will be assisted by Lauren Wingham Smith from Hardy Stevenson and Associates. Let me move on to the virtual protocol. Some of you have phoned in and thank you for doing that. If you have a question or comment as somebody who has phoned in, please just wait for a break in the conversation after the pr presentation has occurred. And once you have that break in the conversation, just introduce yourself and Lauren will be uh, monitoring and, and you ask your comment or provide your question. Lauren will be monitoring who's on the phone to making sure you have a chance to participate. <laughs> Ron Albright is going to be our main presenter. Now, Ron is the project director of infrastructure of, for municipal engineering for SEMA, and he's going to provide a description of what is appearing on the screen as well, so that if you have difficulty with, with bandwidth or you're phoning in, Ron will be descriptive of what is on the screen. And he will also be, uh, for those of you who have hard copies of the presentation, I know a number were handed out in advance. Ron will be talking about the page number he's on as well. I do want to thank Jerry Mahoney uh, for distributing copies of the PowerPoint in advance, as well as the supporting material. For those of you participating in Microsoft Teams, there's a menu on the screen that runs along the bottom of the screen. 
and you can see a hand there. And if you want to ask a question or provide a comment, please put your hand up and I will know then and others will know who you are and make sure that you are called to provide a comment in the order your, your hand goes up. Um, we are also monitoring the comments in chat so that if you wish to type a question or comment in the chat, we will be monitoring that and making sure that gets answered as well. Now, we do have a fairly long agenda, uh, so let's move right into introductions and then on to our presentation. In terms of introductions, the Municipality of Clarington is uh, hosting this meeting. It is responsible for the roads network and the Municipal Class EA. On the call, we have Sean Bagshaw, who's Manager of Infrastructure of the Public Works Department. We also have Amy Burke, who's the Acting Manager of Special Projects for the Planning Services Department. We have a consulting engineering team, SEMA Engineering, and they've been engaged by Clarington to undertake the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment work. We have on the line William McRae, and William is a partner and senior director of infrastructure and municipal engineering. Uh, Ron Albright's been introduced. Alicia Friedel, who's been taking notes, is an environmental professional. So those are the consultants on the call from SEMA. I've, I've introduced myself, Dave Hardy, principal of Hardy Stevenson, and Lauren Wiggum Smith, the project engineer. We do have Canadian nuclear labs uh, folks on the call as well as observers. We have David Smith, Jordan Wilson, Bill Daly, and Susan Bailey. Uh, so they're on the call as observers and stakeholders. I'm happy to have them on the call. With that, I'm going to ask uh, Will McRae from SEMA if you can pro provide a brief health and safety moment. Will? Yes, thanks, Dave. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that this would be as topical as it is uh, given the weather today, but I think uh, it's always good, especially during the shoulder seasons, to uh, kind of be aware of, of uh, the potential for changing weather conditions. Obviously, we went to bed last night and it uh, was a normal evening and we wake up this morning and the snow is on the ground and we're uh, back into winter conditions. Some of us may have uh, changed out of our snow tires and uh, obviously don't have the uh, the tools to deal with the weather that, that we may have had uh, a week or two ago. So always uh, be aware and uh, when you're driving, make sure you, you clean your windshields, um, you know, make sure you get all the obstructions off your off the roof of your car as well and uh, your headlights, taillights so that you're uh, visible to everybody and you don't have any sight obstructions or are blowing snow on the vehicles behind you that might be following you on the highway. And uh, again, drive according to the weather conditions and uh, which as we as we noted today can be very variable at, uh, at this time of year and other times of year. And again, especially this time of year, even if it's not snow, it can be damp and we can dip slightly below zero. You might step out the door to grab a newspaper if anybody still does that and uh, just find that there's a, a little bit of ice and, you know, none of us want to fall down. So just 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 be be aware uh, of, of the changing weather conditions and react accordingly. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Will. In terms of a couple meeting courtesies, and then we'll start our presentation. Um, again, the goal of the meeting is to discuss the transportation options for the Port Granby Transportation Network. So I'm happy if we focus our comments and questions on the transportation options. Remember that this uh, project is being undertaken by Municipality of Clarington and not the Port Hope Area Initiative. So while we do have representatives from CNL on the call, they're here as stakeholders and uh, aren't going to be responding to questions about Port Granby. That said, I know that uh, there are many options for providing them with questions and um, having them answered through a wide, wide variety of means. I've asked Ron Albright um, to present the whole presentation before asking uh, for questions or comments. So we'd like to keep your uh, mics off and screens off until uh, Ron finishes this presentation. And then at that point, We'll turn. Uh, we'll have questions and comments. Turn our mics back on when we have a question or comment to ask. But finally, uh, we do have some prepared questions. Questions that we might you might want to consider as you're listening to the presentation, and there are eight of them. Uh, first, um, which of the 
presented options would be your preferred option and why? If the preferred solution is to close Elliott Road to through traffic, would you still want access to the road by foot or bicycle? What's your greatest concern with the existing and potential future transportation network serving the Port Granby area? And what opportunities do you see? Are there other transportation improvements not presented at the open house tonight that you'd like to be considered or have considered? If so, tell us why. What would be your greatest concern if Elliott Road was improved and open to Lakeshore Road? What would you consider as the greatest benefit? Sixth, has the current closure of Nichols Road between Lakeshore Road and Concession 1 impacted your typical travel in the area that you may have taken in the past? The seventh, the long-term management facility will need access over the long term for servicing, emergency response vehicles, and environmental monitoring. So given your knowledge of the area, what road options would best allow this to occur? And finally, do you have advice or observations to share about how to improve roads running east and west through the study area? So those are the questions you might want to think about as you're listening to Ron Albright uh, give his presentation. With that, Ron, um, I would like to invite you now to uh, present um, the work you've been doing on the uh, transportation network for South Clarington. It's, uh, if you can start and put your presentation up, that would be great. Thank, uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, and I won't leave myself up on the screen, but uh, appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Uh, been working on this project and in particular uh, infrastructure in Clarington for well over 25 years. Uh, the team has a, a vast amount of experience specific to Clarington. So, um, but as always, uh, yeah, local input from the public and other stakeholders is very valuable. So that is the, the, the key focus of, of tonight is to get some additional information that allow us to effectively go through to the next stage and select the preferred al alternative. So I'll, uh, I'll turn myself off here and I'll present, put, present the, uh, the presentation and I'll walk through the slides. And as Dave said, at the end of that, there will be a question period. Just as a check, uh, can you see the first screen? We can, Ron. Okay. Uh, again, Public Information Center number one, uh, Port Granby Project and Use Transportation Network Municipal Class Environmental Assessment. Um, You've muted yourself, Ron, somehow. There we go. Uh, thanks, Will. Project background and context. Uh, Long-term waste management facility was constructed in Port Granby, Ontario to isolate, store, and clean up low radioactive waste that uh, is contaminated with soils within the soils near the shore of Lake Ontario. As part of the cleanup and management of the long-term waste management facility at Port Granby. There is an agreement between the federal government and the municipality of Clarington for the construction, maintenance, and use of municipal roads. As the termination of the lease of the road approaches, the municipality wishes to determine what the best way to address the long-term waste management facility operations, as well as potential improvements to the road network through the completion of a municipal class environmental assessment or EA for short uh, for the Port Granby project and use transportation network. Slide three, problem and opportunity statement. At the termination of the lease agreement for Elliott Road, uh, between the municipality and the government of Canada. The municipality has the option to request a removal of the road works between the facility and concession road one, initiate closure of the road 
or reestablish the road as a public roadway. In addition to Elliott Road, there are, are alternative routes to the facility that could be used to access the site in the long term and improve the Port Granby transportation network as a whole. The municipality needs to make the decision on what happens to Elliott Road and how access to the long term waste management facility will be facilitated in the long term with consideration for the functionality of the local transportation network and within the context of safe continued operation and end use of the Port Granby facility. Study process, uh, slide four. The municipality class, uh, sorry, the municipality, the municipal class EA is a planning and design process approved by the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and, and Parks to meet requirements of the Ontario Environmental Assessment Act. The study follows the class EA process for a schedule B projects and will uh, and will complete phases one and two as outlined below. As shown on the slide in blue box, phase one, which uh, was a problem or and or opportunity notice of study commencement, which was issued back in January of 2021. And the next box within the slide shows phase two, and we are at the beginning of phase two uh, tonight at this uh, public uh, information center. And then after this, there will be a follow up PIC with preferred alternatives to be um, reviewed further. And that is anticipated to happen in July of 2021. And all things going uh, to according to schedule, uh, we hope to uh, um, issue a notice of study completion in September of 2021. Slide five, study area. Uh, as shown on the screen, uh, the aerial photo photography and outlined by the yellow um, border, the study area is bounded by Concession Road 1 to the north, East Town Line Road to the east, Lakeshore Road to the south, and Newtonville, Newtonville Road to the west, and is also tied to the Highway 401 interchange at Newtonville Road. Completed environmental assessment. An EA, an EA completed in two, 2007 in support of the um, low long-term waste management facility studied the likely environmental effects of the Port Granby project on six environmental components relative to baseline existing uh, environmental conditions and the likely effects of the environment on the of the environment on the Port Granby project. Atmospheric environment, geologic geology and groundwater environment aquatic environment, terrestrial environment, human health and safety, socioeconomic environment. The area, the area enclosed by the solid red li uh, line in the figure on the following page was evaluated under the environmental assessment completed for the Port Granby project in 2007. Slide seven. On this slide, you can see uh, uh, an outtake from the original uh, Port Granby uh, project environmental assessment showing the larger area bounded in red, uh, which goes slightly east of um, East Town Line Road, south of uh, Lakeshore Road, over west over to roughly Lambert Road or Lancaster, sorry, Lancaster Road, south to the lake and north bounded roughly by the C and R um, tracks. And then within that uh, bounded area, there were other um, areas that were uh, studied in a little more detail, uh, specifically uh, bounded by the black box is the, the new long-term waste management facility and shown in the dashed red box uh, below uh, Lakeshore Road is the old um, long-term waste management facility, which is uh, 
which has been cleaned up. Slide eight, 2007 completed environmental assessment. Uh, Sorry, uh, the assessment of likely environmental effects on the project yield following results. Geology and groundwater environment, no significant effect from the long-term waste management facility. Uh, and if it's okay, I'm just going to call it the facility from now on. <laughs> uh, the aquatic environment, uh, limited potential for consequential effects. Terrestrial environment, no potential lasting and measurable effects. Atmospheric environment, no predicted changes that would have consequential effect on the project. Human health and safety, no potential effects. Socioeconomic environment, no potential effects. All residual effects, sorry, all residual adverse effects identified were evaluated and found to be not significant when taking into consideration recommended mitigation measures for each effect. Slide nine, long-term management plan. The Port Granby project will be moving into the maintenance and monitoring phase, phase three. The phase, this phase will involve maintenance and monitoring activities to confirm the site, to confirm the site continues to be effective and safe. CNL is therefore required to access the site management facility long-term. Current access agreements. Nichols Road South. There's an agreement between the federal government and the municipality of Clarington for use of Nichols Road by CNL to access environmental monitoring locations. Elliott Road North and South. Leased by municipality of Clarington to the Government of Canada for use by CNL to access environmental monitoring locations. The expiry on the current agreement is in April of 2022. Other ongoing ongoing considerations uh, on this slide there's uh, you can see the picture of Nichols Road showing the location of monitoring um, stations within the uh, facility, uh, long-term facility lands. Um, and one drainage water sampling location is accessed via Nichols Road that you can see at the north part of uh, the picture. On this slide, slide 11, uh, so there's a graphic showing uh, Elliott Road uh, with a number of monitoring stations along uh, both sides of Elliott Road within the long-term waste facility as well as west of the road. Slide 12, other ongoing considerations. Uh, as part of this project, um, CNL municipality of Clarent, uh, municipality of Clarington, Canada, and uh, other stakeholders are in the process of uh, negotiating the Port Granby Nature Reserve, which, as shown on the slide, highlighted in pink, would be the elements of the nature reserve, and the area bounded in red and shaded in yellow would be the project's lands uh, under that would remain under uh, Canada's jurisdiction. Current route and existing conditions. Traffic associated with the long-term uh, waste management facility currently access the site from Concession Road 1 on Elliott Road. When traffic is active, uh, there is a flag person there to help safely direct traffic through the intersection. Uh, as shown in the bottom right graphic, uh, the route, the, the primary route to access the site is via Newtonville Road, east on Concession Road 1, and south on Elliott Road to the west gate of the facility. 
Since the municipality leased a portion of Elliott Road to the federal government for use on this project, the portion of Elliott Road currently in use south of Concession Road 1 has been reconstructed from a local farm road to a road of similar standard as municipal roads. Slide 14. Estimated daily traffic volumes for the long-term waste management facility wastewater treatment plant. Uh, on this page, we show a table uh, which specifies vehicle type, estimated volume, and the purpose. Uh, regular ve vehicles for staff and other visitors to the site uh, are estimated from six to 10 vehicles um, per day. Um, the purpose operations and, and maintenance staff, couriers, uh, are estimated one to two deliveries per day. And then transport uh, trailers, which would be for supplies of bulk material or pickup, uh, are estimated at one to two vehicles per day. And that is uh, subject to change as uh, CNL is able to monitor um, the changes in the production at or at the plant as time goes by and some of the residuals are reduced over time. Alternative solutions. Alternative planning solutions have been developed at this stage to address the problem statement. Do nothing, which would maintain the current access route, Elliott Road North, Concession Road 1, with safety improvements at the intersection. Uh, option two, improve Elliott Road to Lakeshore Road, on either the old alignment or a new alignment, which would uh, mimic the current uh, access to the water tre treatment plant and open it to the public with access to the long-term waste management facility. Reinstate Elliott Road to former farm access road with main access to uh, long-term waste management facility from Lakeshore Road. Uh, number four, improve Nichols Road and revise site access route with main access to long-term waste management facility from Lakeshore Road. On slide 16, alternative route solutions uh, as shown in this graphic on the aerial photo, the three potential routes that were described earlier. Uh, in the table, there's a summary of each of the, the lengths uh, of trip for each of those routes. Elliott Road, the main, the, the main, which is equivalent to the existing route uh, that is used now. Um, the length of the route is roughly 3.9 kilometers. Number of properties that would be passed uh, on this route is roughly 25. The number of homes passed is roughly nine, uh, as shown in the green line uh, on this route, which is uh, Newtonville Road, Lakeshore Road, and an access um, to the site. This is roughly 5.9 kilometers, uh, passing roughly 39 properties and 22 homes. And finally, in the red, um, it's a combination of the red and the concession road one blue, um, it is a total of 7.6 kilometers, uh, 32 properties passed, and roughly 14 homes passed. Slide 17. Uh, this is a, a summary of the road network project options for improved functionality of the Port Granby Transportation Network. So on this slide, um, all of the options are consolidated. Uh, as noted on this aerial map, uh, it, it shows the the previous uh, Nichols Road, which was a through public road prior to 2005-2006, at which time uh, one of the, the CNR bridge was taken out by a train. Uh, since that time, um, the road was, was clo closed, obviously. It was impassable, um, but uh, over the last, last little while, it's been also closed in order to facilitate uh, the project works. You can again see the options in, in blue 
dot dash line would be the uh, the current Elliott Road. Um, in red, there is a realignment of a solid red line shows a realignment of Elliott Road to match more or less the access to the site from Lakeshore Road as it is now uh, as a driveway uh, with a, a little bit of an extension to connect over to Elliott Road and a dashed green. Uh, you can see the old Elliott Road alignment, um, which would obviously would have to be improved as, as part of this option. At the top of the map, you can see an orange dot uh, or square, which identifies the intersection of Concession Road 1 and Elliott Road. And this is highlighted because there would need to be um, some safety improvements uh, done at this location uh, to, to um, address some of the sight line issues that are present there now. Uh, the uh, red triangle, which is shown over top of the railway, is uh, notes the two railway structures that would have to be reinstated to make this road passable. Uh, if Nichols Road is permanently closed, it's, it's suggested that uh, a roundabout cul-de-sac uh, be provided at the at the south terminus north of the tracks. That's what the yellow dot uh, signifies. And the dashed, the short dashed red line bounded by um, uh, a red, uh, sorry, a green dash line is signifying the improvement of Nichols Road south of the railway corridor. And these next slides will just uh, expand a little bit on each of the and provide some other background on each of uh, the options provided. Concession Road 1 and Elliott Road intersection. Uh, this is slide 18. On this slide, there's uh, some aerial photographs uh, or an aerial photograph showing uh, the misalignment of the intersection. Uh, on the bottom, there it was the previous. Um, this is a photo of Elliott Road north of concession looking south. You can again see the misalignment and uh, the Last picture here is on Concession Road 1 looking east, uh, which again shows the, the offset intersection and what's not um, captured here, but you can see on the uh, on the top uh, aerial photo, you can see the car that's uh, sitting on Elliott Road, which uh, the flag person is sitting in there to, to safely uh, let the cars in and out of that um, intersection due to uh, the sight lines with the grade difference from the, the road looking to the west. Slide 19, Elliott Road. Again, uh, poss possible need uh, for secure gated access from the north and south and coordination of deliveries with um, and with first responders if existing site access route is maintained. Uh, there's a photo here showing the, the current gated location at the north end of Elliott Road, as well as uh, a height restriction bar, uh, which is a safety measure due to the, the low uh, height of the CP rail uh, further south on the road. And on the bottom, there's another photo of the south end of Elliott Road as it um, previously or, or still does connect to Lakeshore Road. Um, enhancement of the existing Elliott Road alignment between the long-term waste management facility and Lakeshore Road uh, or design and construction of an alternate alignment uh, and the intersection of Lakeshore Road to achieve municipal standards. At this, uh, the, the existing alignment, again, similar to the north end, uh, the connection with Lakeshore Road here is less than ideal from a, a visibility perspective it's on the, the end of a curve so again this would need to be improved or as suggested uh, relocated further east um, in line with the the current entrance to the uh, water treatment plant noted benefits impacts uh, to Elliott Road no sharp bends making the route 
more easily navigated by transport trucks. Uh, it is comp. It is a component of the existing route used to access the facility. Continued use would reduce potential for confusion in future and the prob probability of future deliveries not finding the site. The existing southern portion of Elliott Road between uh, long-term waste management facility and Lakeshore Road passes through heavily forested lands. Light and noise pollution from public use of Elliott Road would be a concern. Added public visibility, eyes on the street, so to speak, uh, would provide some added security um, if made a, a through road. Nichols Road, uh, on this, this is uh, slide 21. On here, there's a series of photos, uh, aerial photography, showing uh, Nichols Road from Lakeshore Road up to the CPR tracks. Uh, there's additional photos of the north end of Nichols Road, uh, south end of Nichols Road, north of the, uh, the railway corridor. And again, uh, another photo at the intersection of Lakeshore Road and Nichols Road. Nichols Road will continue to be used by CNL staff to access monitoring site locations. Um, gate signage and maintenance should be clarified and in compliance with roads agreement. Existing three phase aerial hydro line runs along Nichols Road and that will uh, access to that will need to be uh, maintained for Hydro One. And access to main hydro plant uh, would be required, which I just state it. Uh, again, Nichols Road, CN and CP rail crossing, uh, the existing Nichols Road rail crossing um, was, would have been uh, of historic significance. Uh, they both are, uh, both the CP and CN are no longer there. They've been removed. Uh, significance of the truss bridge would be considered prior to planning any future works. So if this was chosen as a, a solution, consideration of its past historic significance uh, most likely would be built into uh, the type of structure that is put there. Nichols Road turnaround, uh, slide 23. Uh, this uh, shows a, an aerial of Nichol Ro Nichols Road just north of the CP tracks and uh, a lo potential location for a turn um, a formalized turnaround uh, that would be able to accommodate uh, delivery vehicles as well as uh, maintenance equipment, uh, particular uh, snow clearing equipment. Slide 24, uh, possible addition, uh, possible additional preliminary environmental assessment. On this slide, there's uh, again, uh, an outtake from the previous environmental assessment for the project um, showing uh, the greater um, expanded uh, site uh, or study area um, out to East Town Line Road and um, west over to uh, Newtonville Road. The, the preferred alternative road network determined through this initial stage may or may not require further assessment depending on the impact uh, on if impact solutions are outside of existing rights of way. Emergency services response. We've engaged Clarington EMS and asked for lessons learned from a, a mock emergency they have had. Um, we are still waiting for that information. And we just requested that within the last couple of weeks. Multiple access points, uh, current direction, is access uh, via Lakeshore Road, namely, uh, mainly uh, to avoid any delay if there is a, a train on the CN track. Um, wind direction may play a role, impact on potential rail incident unrelated to long-term waste management facility. Additional information provided uh, once we hear back from Clarington EMS, and we'll include that in our uh, part of our evaluation process as we move forward. And the final slide, slide 26, next steps. 
uh, assessment based on comments received from the public and other stakeholders, as well as public safety and other potential impacts of various of various alternatives, review and uh, confirm preferred planning solution, develop alternative design concept or concepts, complete detailed evaluation of preferred alternative, and hold another public information center number two, and then prepare a file uh, project report, which would be submitted to the ministry. Uh, we ask that uh, you please uh, complete a comment sheet, or if uh, that's a little cumbersome, if you can just send an email to either myself or Sean Bagshaw, uh, providing your comments with regards to what was presented tonight, or any other feedback you have uh, that will help us on our on our decision making. And we'd ask that you have those back to us before May 14th, 2021. And uh, I'll just provide a little bit of narrative with regards to filling out. There is uh, the questions that uh, David stated are also provided in a PDF on the project website. You can go on there if you want to download the PDF, uh, fill it out, and then you can uh, send it through, attach it to an email to either myself or Mr. Bagshaw, and that will form part of our uh, our project record. And with that, I will hand it back to Dave. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ron, for a, a comprehensive presentation. Um, for those of you who have joined, and there's 20 people on the call, um, this is the Municipality of Clarington's uh, Port Granby Transportation Network a Class Environmental Assessment Public Information Center number one. Um, so we're about to open up uh, for your comments and questions. As we do, um, I know Ron will be uh, quite uh, happy to go back to any particular slides if you want to have a slide back up on the screen. I know a number of you have hard copies. Uh, Ron uh, was very gracious in making sure that uh, uh, he gave page references if you have a question on a particular page. For those of you who are on the phone calls, and I see uh, I think four or five people on calls, um, I'm just going to ask you to uh, just jump in when there is a break in the conversation, identify yourself and ask your question. So we're happy to get questions of clarification. Um, and uh, at this point, I know, uh, Ron, there was an initial question from Garfield Payne on just the timing of uh, the lease. Um, he asked the timing of the road lease uh, just before we got started. So I'm not sure if you're, uh, perhaps you can answer that for us. Uh, how much time is left on the lease? Yes, uh, the lease is up in April. So roughly, uh, actually to the day tomorrow <laughs> is up uh, in April of 2022 That's of great. next year. Thank you. Okay, and with Teams, uh, there's a hand in the menu there. So if you have a comment or a question, I'm uh, happy to uh, have you just click on that and uh, we can we can get your uh, comment or question. So uh, Garfield, I see your hand up and is there another question or comment? And if you can unmute yourself, that would be great. Yes, thanks. Uh, I wonder if Mr. Albright could go back over the four options that he uh, touched on he said they started off uh, with respect to Elliott Road, do nothing. Uh, the second was improve Elliott Road all the way to Lakeshore Road, and I didn't get full details of three and four. So if he could do that, that would be helpful for me. And as I expressed uh, to, um, to you at the beginning, uh, we certainly have a, an interest and a concern that uh, adequate access be maintained to our farming operations because of the farm immediately to the east of Elliott Road. And we also have a long-term concern about uh, uh, improper use of the road, dumping of uh, waste and other things uh, due to increased traffic flow. But yes, if Mr. Albright could go back over the options, please. Thank you. Yep. 
definitely. Uh, so uh, uh, I've just pulled up the uh, the original slide for the four alternatives. So the third alternative, Mr. Payne, were, uh, was reinstate Elliott Road to the former farm access with uh, main access to the long-term waste management facility from Lakeshore Road. And this, uh, we envision, when we say farm access, envision the asphalt would be removed and uh, reinstated back to um, basically the a gravel, gravel access road, uh, probably in a little bit better state than what was there before. And then the, the fourth option was to improve um, Nichols Road and revise site access route, uh, the site access route uh, with the main access to the long-term waste uh, management facility from Lakeshore Road. Uh, so I'll just flip to the next slide here, which kind of shows, uh, shows the fourth option here would be the a combination of uh, Sorry, combination of the red line shown here for Nichols and a part of concession, and then uh, the the rest of the blue line up to the 401. So, Mr. Payne, of those options, were there any that uh, struck you as being preferred? Yes. Um, right now, the the current arrangement seems to work fine in terms of cropping vehicles, combines, trucks, tractors, etc., coming uh, down Elliott Road on good asphalt. We certainly have no interest in seeing the road torn, the asphalt torn up and it revert back to a gravel road. Um, that seems a bit uh, far-fetched. Uh, so yes, I would say option one really gives the combination for access for the site, the facility, as well as access for uh, for our cropping operations and some control to prevent, um, you know, improper use of the road. Okay. Uh, I did listen with interest to what you were saying about Nichols Road as well. For many years, we did have good access to Lakeshore Road down Nichols Road over those two bridges. The road, uh, Elliott Road, as you know, is handicapped by the CN uh, rail, uh, sorry, the CP rail being basically a narrow and offset uh, passageway through there, which hardly seems very suitable for fire trucks or other emergency vehicles if they ever had to go down there. I, I think it could be done with a dump truck moving slowly. It has been done for many years, hauling stuff in and out, but not when you're in a heck of a hurry if there was a, an emergency. So that's just my initial thoughts. Um, I'll talk to my family members, but we, we may have more and we'll take advantage of your uh, comment period by May 14th. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Ron, perhaps we can leave that slide up. Um, I'm looking for um, other folks who uh, live in the area and uh, do you have comments or questions or any preferences? Brian, I see your hand up. Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Okay, uh, I live on, just on Lakeshore Road, just near Elliott Road. And I actually have a little property that goes up Elliott Road that I don't have access to because of the little yellow swing gate they put up. However, I'm sure that'll change. I, from what I can gather, what I like to see, I think, is for the maintain the road that's already there, and then once you get to the uh, to the site, then can you not go cross country to Lakeshore Road and forget about the intersection down at our corner? Uh, to answer your question, yes, that is is one of the options that's being considered. I'll just go to here. Uh, can you see my screen? Or are you on the phone? I'm 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 on my computer. Okay. Yeah. So. The okay, option, yeah. That so little red line there, that's a, the alternative from the from the site down to Lake down to the Lakeshore Road. Correct. That would be your cross country option. Um, and where to, would that come out exactly? 
roughly, uh, if you recall, where the old gates to the old site, uh, actually, they're still there, where the pond lagoons used to be. That's roughly okay. where it would so, be, it, it more or less where the access um, that they've built. So it's uh, before the, the bridge. Oh, yes. Yep. The bridge that they built coming down. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That bridge will be... Okay. Uh, will be removed as part of the project and the old road alignment reinstated. Well, that gets my vote. So Brian, uh, you see the uh, red uh, alignment and the green there. Um, yep. So is your comment that you prefer the red alignment or the green? I prefer it to, to snake off on the red alignment down to Lakeshore Road. Okay. It's too too dangerous a corner down where I live. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there other folks on the call that um, either on the phone, and if so, just speak up, or on um, your computers and just put your hand up or type something into chat, and we'll watch for a question or comment there. I'll give you a minute to to think about that. Okay, as you're thinking about that, just to remind you of the questions we want to ask you. Um, uh, again, which of the options do you prefer um, in terms of Elliott Road? Uh, which are the options there would work? Are there other transportation improvements that you feel would be helpful? Uh, want us to consider? Um, what about the east-west roads going through the, the site? Um, are there matters that should be addressed there? And um, what ro road options would allow that long-term emergency access to the facility as well? Questions or comments? Garfield, please go ahead. And then Brian. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I guess I agree with what I heard from Brian that it would make more sense to have the access to the uh, water treatment building the way he's suggesting or the way Mr. Albright's drawn it there with that sort of snaky option coming in from uh, Lakeshore Road. It's, uh, you know, relatively flat, flat and could be straightened and, you know, would give much quicker access, I think, for emergency vehicles. Thank you. Thank you. And Brian, uh, please go ahead. I just have another comment about uh, this road uh, being an alternative to Newtonville Road. Is Newtonville Road, if you've ever been down in the wintertime, can be a devil in the, with the snow blowing. So this might provide a good alternative access to Lakeshore Road in the really bad weather. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments uh, or uh, road alignments or access or other considerations for the transportation network. Uh, Garfield, again with you. Yes, could Mr. Albright tell us what the status is of the uh, discussions with CN and CP about reinstating the bridges at Nichols Road? Um, so, and, and will that part that he's got shown in I mean, the red line continuing to the south, will that be become publicly accessible or is the idea that that will remain uh, only for the use of uh, uh, the facility people? Go ahead, Ron. Yes, if uh, the discussions with the railway, um, it just and it essentially was initiated as part of this EA. Um, if if it's determined that the preferred route is the Nichols Road um, alternative, uh, obviously we would have to to negotiate uh, with the railways what those bridges, uh, the reinstatement would look like, and and uh, their uh, their responsibility for it. Uh, if if that was the chosen network, yes, that portion south of the railway would become an open public road for use 
by the public. Uh, right now, it's it's conveniently used by CNL staff to access their one monitoring station. Um, depending on the frequency, that's not to say they couldn't still do that from the road or work out a uh, an access um, driveway from internal uh, to their own site. But yes, that would be the intent. Is um, this 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 portion would be upgraded to be similar to what the the north section of uh, Nichols is, uh, which is a gravel road, and the two bridges um, in some uh, some state uh, would be replaced. Uh, probably not exactly as they were before, um, but uh, bridges would need to go back in, obviously to to traverse the the railways. Uh, Will, I see your hand up. Yeah, just to add what uh, Ron said. So if, if if Nichols Road isn't chosen as as the preferred alternative, there's the kind of on the slide, you can see that the, the south end of Elliott Road and the south end of Nichols Road are, are surrounded in green dash lines. So the thinking there is um, to kind of complement the uh, the end use nature reserve. Um, as, as you folks will have known and uh, uh, what uh, Mr. Payne has already kind of noted, when you have dead end uh, roads that are uh, not really well maintained, you tend to get a lot of people uh, stopping in there and dropping off garbage and it becomes a real dumping ground. So uh, really, if, if we don't plan on using either the south end of Elliott Road or the south end of Nichols Road, what we would really like to do is kind of transfer those right of ways or leftover pieces of right of, right of ways to the land holdings that would become the nature reserve so that there aren't any kind of public penetrations in into the nature reserve lands and that would uh, deal with that the legal dumping of materials i think uh i think there was an old car taken out of the south end of elliott road there and i forget the number of bags of garbage that cnl has uh has cleaned up on, on these properties over the last number of years. They've done a wonderful job of tidying everything up and we'd like it to maintain that way. So, and from that perspective, that is one of the advantages of having Elliott Road be a through road. You don't get those illegal dumping activities and things like that if people are uh, concerned about another vehicle kind of coming down the road. And that happens more often when a road is a through road as opposed to being a, a dead end road that leads, leads nowhere. Thank you, Will. Other comments or Garfield, back to you again, please. Do we have any idea from any of the people who are online how frequently there would be foliage of um, the uh, filtrate uh, canisters or tubes uh, that would come out of the waterworks and have to go somewhere? Um, you know, from the water filtration house, which is collecting the low level radioactivity and the arsenic and all the other good stuff that's uh, in the mound. Uh, I understand those will eventually be taken to Port Hope. Uh, how frequently will that be happening? At, at this point, the estimated uh, could be five, roughly five to six times a week uh, but they as uh, now that the mound is closed up um, that it will take some time to 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 judge exact or to monitor exactly what what that number is going to be and over the next you know two to five years they'll have a better handle on how those numbers they will go down over time um, but just exactly how quickly uh, they they can't say with 100% certainty at this point in time. Are they shown in your chart here? Would you say transport trailers or regular vehicles? The, They're not couriers, I guess. No, they, they are represented in the last uh, box on this table, uh, transport trailers. So uh, th this is one to two per day, uh, which is which represents um, the delivery of supplies for the treatment plant, uh, as well as um, what would go off site. So, I mean, this represents five to ten trips, trips a week, um, 
so it's within that that 10 trips it's not over and above that so it's uh within that and we haven't been we have not been given a, a definitive number at this point in time thank you thank you thank you ron uh, I don't want to leave out anybody on the phone. Um, if you are on the phone, you have a question or comment or something you prefer or something you'd not prefer, uh, be great time to, to speak up. Okay, not hearing anything. Um, Brian and Garfield, I, I know that uh, you've been very generous with us with your comments, and uh, it's very thankful for those remarks. I'm going to start to close off the meeting, not hearing any other comments, and uh, keep in mind that uh, this is the first of the PICs. There'll be a second opportunity to provide comments, and there's lots of ways to participate, as Ron described. Um, so Ron, if you could just repeat the next steps and then I'm gonna turn it over to Sean Bagshaw with the Municipality of Clarington just to um, close off. Now, Bev, I see your hand up and um, so please go ahead. Well, I was just thinking that, um, you know, do we want a lot of those big transport trucks going to Lakeshore Road? I mean, there's a lot of cyclists that use that road. I mean, I think cyclists also use concession road one, but just when you said the numbers, it could be five to 10 per week, haulage, just anything that could avoid big trucks on the lakeshore, which is a sort of a tourist road. Um, that's what I was thinking about. So your thought that would be the trucks would, would go north on Elliott to get up to the 401? Uh, come in the north entrance, yes. The north entrance, yes, okay. And Thank you for that. Farm, you know, access for people like the gentleman, Brian, that needs access to Elliott Road South. I don't know if he could just use the road the way it is. Anyway, that, I don't know. But I was just thinking of the large trucks on that, uh, on Lakeshore Road. Not good. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Uh, Brian, please go ahead. And Just Brian. a comment on, on the self access. I, I would love to have the road uh, kept as a, as a farm road so that I can get access to my fence down there, but I don't need much more than a path beyond my property, which isn't very far up the road. Brian, exactly where is, or is it uh it's north of lakeshore obviously off is it off the it's old on, alignment it's on the west side of of elliott road where it comes off of lakeshore road or on the east so side west, you have west. A, you have a bit of the the creek as part of your yeah. uh yeah okay yeah yeah right. it's pasture oh yeah i see there's a small spot in there amongst yeah. the trees yeah, that little yellow gate you put up kind of gets in the way sometimes, but I guess it's better there than not. I have nothing at all. Thank you. Others uh, comments before I, I start to close off. I don't want to rush this because uh, you, again, your comments are valuable, uh, really helping us to, or at least the project team to, to make decisions here. Any other comments? Okay, with that, um, then, Ron, um, we have some next steps, and then Sean, um, if you could just close off the meeting with a, a word of thanks from Clarington. I think Garfield has his hand up again. Uh, oh, so, okay, thank you, Garfield. <laughs> yeah, I was just responding to the uh, the comments before about the trucks using uh, Lakeshore Road. I guess a similar comments probably relate to anybody who's got. This material moving by them, whether it's our farming operation or the people on the baseline road. Uh, I, I don't know what precautions are taken. Uh, I'm sure there are some precautions taken when this material is being handled. Uh, and uh, no doubt there are tractor trailers going in there at the moment. I don't know which way they go in, whether they come along Lakeshore Road or 
uh, go the north way. Um, so I don't know. I have a similar concern because of that odd hole in the wall configuration of any vehicle containing this sort of material going northbound adjacent to our crop land and pasture land. Yeah, their designated haul route, uh, the primary haul route, which would include those transport uh, trailers, is via Elliott Road up to Concession Road 1. Um, so they are able to negotiate the CP underpass, but that that is, uh, unless it's an oversized load, uh, they have the ability to um, use uh, Newtonville and Lakeshore, but uh, currently, the designated haul route and the route they should be using is Elliott Road to Concession Road 1 and Newtonville Road. When you spoke about grade uh, in, and sightline improvements at the junction of Elliott Road and, and uh, Baseline Road, is there always going to be, uh, well, put this way, is there going to be some excavation or something to improve the visibility for vehicles with this sort of material coming out? I mean, I don't imagine you're going to have a flagman there for the next 100 years. <laughs> that, that is exactly uh, exactly right. And they are there uh, daily. I was by the other day and um, the one helped a, a car out of Elliott Road. But yes, uh, exactly what the solution would be. We, we we haven't got to that. That would be the next stage, depending on what comes out of uh, this this process and the next uh, the next steps. But in looking at it, there are a number of solutions. Uh, you know, raise the road profile such that Elliott Road is is up and able to see um, further west. Uh, realign Elliott Road slightly to uh, align with the north section or as far as necessary to improve visibility to the west. Uh, cut, shave down uh, concession road one, uh, lower lower the uh, what I guess uh, you would consider is the problem right now, um, just the, the curvature of the road to the west flatten that out so you have a better visibility. There's a number of options uh, which we would have to weigh through uh, to determine the best, uh, minimize private property impacts and and uh, provide the best safety improvement. So there's a number of options that would be looked at, but um, having a flagman uh, have a job for the next 100 years is not one of them. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Other comments? Okay. Ron, if you just go over our next steps next, again. Yep. Please. So uh, we'll, our, our next steps, we'll, we'll take the input we received tonight and what we receive over the next um, roughly three weeks. Um, bring that back to the team, we'll assess it, we'll look at the alternatives, we'll we'll start to uh, rank each of them from a, a number of different ca categories, um, come up with a preferred um, solution, and then we'll start to, to provide a, a, develop a preliminary design concept for that solution and provide a little bit more uh, detail similar to uh, the, the detail I, I provided with uh, with regards to Elliott Road and Concession One um, intersection, bring those, put those together in a package uh, for presentation at another public information center. Uh, deal with the other stakeholders that would be involved, uh, such as the railway, um, our EMS, and that sort of thing. Uh, come forward uh, with the preferred solution, and then uh, again public feedback, and then we prepare and file our project report to the ministry uh, with the recommended uh, improvements. Uh, beyond that, um, it would be a consideration of the municipality to, to move that project forward. And uh, the thought would be that that, that uh, would go through detailed design kind of over the winter months and might go to construction uh, in the spring uh, or summer of next year. 
subject to funding and budget approval from the municipality of Clarington. Thank you, Ron. And the next PIC is going to be in July? July of this year. Okay, thank you, good. Uh, and folks, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the your engagement doesn't stop here. There's an uh, opportunity to provide answered questions on the website, as well as a comment form on the website. And please, if you can talk to your neighbors, uh, we'd be more than happy of dropping off um, the presentation to your neighbors and the comment forms and the questions and so on, as we've already done through uh, the assistance of uh, Jerry Mahoney, which I, I've, I've thanked as the, on the earlier part of the call. If there are no more questions or comments. Can I, sorry, can I go just ahead? ask a quick question on uh, your rank prioritization for the different uh, options? Please, can you yes. Just give a broad sweep of what type of categories you're considering. Thank you. Ron, could you go back to the presentations? And I certainly can. Uh, yes, just one sec here. Uh, yeah, we we did cover them off um, as part of the other. Other. Uh, Sorry. Uh, no, no, no worries. Uh, uh, but, uh, so these are, are in general, these are, are uh, the part of it. Um, so basically environmental impacts, be it, uh, you know, most uh, of the solutions that are uh, uh, put forward are within an existing right of way or an old, old road base. So many of these would not necessarily apply because it's not through a virgin field uh, or a forest or, you know, uh, uh, that sort that sort of thing so there's uh kind of the the environmental so groundwater um air aquatic uh, terrestrial atmospheric so human health and safety so that's part of it as well with regards to the operation of the facility that's chosen uh socioeconomic so impact uh, adjacent impact and access to uh, adjacent properties and then obviously um, uh, technically the feasibility uh, from a technical perspective of each of those um, facility if there's any challenges um, such as as you know the the bridges uh, they were there before but um, you know if there's some there are challenges with that or and the other part of the evaluation would obviously be economic um, the, the cost of the improvement would be in in there as well. And those will be outlined uh, and how they were weighted would be part of uh, part of what is presented at the next um, PIC as to how how the preferred alternative was come about. And it's not an exact science or usually uh, it, there is there. Uh, there is a, a process we go through and each each of them are weighted um, basically if, if you know uh, from the best being a I'll call it a full circle um, kind of to the to the west uh, to the worst uh, or or most impactful being a, a quarter of a circle or or zero circles um, and then those are are consolidated and you know come up with a point ranking and the best uh, solution is picked through that process. Thanks, Ron. Uh, Dr. Payne, any follow-up questions or comments? No, that's all. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay, I think we've probably come to the end of our meeting. Um, from Hardy Stevenson's perspective, thank you very much for your, taking your time. Uh, Sean, uh, would you like to uh, just thank our guests? Uh, and I will do one final check before we completely close off. But Sean, could you thank our guests for being on the line with us tonight, please? Yeah, so, you know, thanks to everybody that uh, came and the comments were provided. That was very helpful and uh, the project team and as well as CNL for uh, 
being here just to support and, and hear the concerns. So thanks everybody. And again, please submit your written comments and encourage anybody else who couldn't make it tonight to uh, view the information on the website. And uh, I'm always available if you wanna reach out to me directly as well. So thanks again. Thank you, everybody. I don't see any other comments. So with that, um, thank you very much. Uh, have a great rest of the evening. Uh, goodbye.